Well, hey, everybody, this is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. If you've been listening to this show for any length of time, you know how much I love this brewer and what it does for coffee, what it's doing for the coffee industry. The SCA award-winning technology allows you to have control over an incredible range of flavors in your coffee that you might not even have been able to get before from a standard brewer. It allows you to customize brewing for all of your coffees and create a consistent next level experience for your batch brew coffee. But it's also something that is versatile in that people use it for making tea. Also, you can make batched ice lattes and batched cold brew. So it's a workhorse. It's versatile, beautiful to look at. And I think you should go check them out over at groundcontrol.coffee. Getting a competitive advantage, leveling up your quality, and looking good in the process. The Ground Control Cyclops Brewer is definitely something that you should check out for your cafe. Go find out more information again over at groundcontrol.coffee. Today's episode is also brought to you by La Merzocco, who's been making espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927 and supporting the coffee industry all along the way by listening to their customers coffee retailers just like you who want the heart of their business, the espresso machine, to be reliable and continually improving as their business grows. This is what La Marzocco excels in. The KB90 machine is a great example of innovation as it has uh, straight in locking porta filters for ergonomics, built-in scales for accuracy, as auto flush for cleanliness and speed. All of these things are related to helping you be successful in your coffee bar their salespeople are available to help you get fitted with the right machine. Reach out to them by emailing info at lamarzocousa.com and also check out their website, lamarzocousa.com. Okay, everybody. So today I wanted to talk to you about something that I heard at Coffee Fest. Um, this is you know, what I do all year. Uh, I, I talk to you and uh, I talk to guests and I talk to cool people at Coffee Fest during the um, lectures and the education garden sessions, which are basically just on the trade show floor. There is a, a little corner where we do presentations. People can just wander in and uh, they can listen to what we have to say. In one of the sessions, we were talking about managing managers. And the question came up at the end of the chat first about how do I you know, make time to do some of these things, considering that I have such a busy schedule. And after we talked about that a little bit, we talked about scheduling, we talked about prioritization and things like that. The question came up from the same person, how do I get over feeling guilty for taking time for myself, for taking a day off, for not working on the business? Of course, we're talking with an owner in this situation is the, the owner was the manager wearing all the hats, you know, as typical as that is for coffee entrepreneurs, but you could be a manager thinking the same thing. And like we've talked about in episodes related to overwork, like, um, the shift break called when going above and beyond goes too far. There is a kind of twisted nobility to sacrificing ourselves and our energy, our well-being on behalf of the business. This hustle culture that says you can't really have a life outside of business without worrying that the energy you're spending on something that at first glance looks frivolous, like watching a movie with your family, um, going on a walk, uh, taking a day off in, in our example here, those types of things are are to be worried about because you know you could be working on your business and get that much farther ahead the only problem is past a certain point you reach diminishing returns you ha you do have to be involved in your business obviously and yes there are sacrifices that you have to make in order to run a business in order to be a leader there are, you sign up for that added responsibility, which does add stress, it does add extra weight, but unless that extra stress and responsibility and weight is met with an extra amount of self-care 
and purposeful and mindful approaches to making sure that you're good taking that on, then that weight will crush you. And as a result, it will crush other people too, because now you will start forgetting things. You'll start having a worse attitude um, because you've let bitterness soak in and you start to see the things that you value outside of work crumbling around you. And that bleeds over into how you view your work as this giant burden. And that will cloud your vision for what you can do with your job. And so what it ends up doing, instead of actually getting you ahead, it actually it, it pushes you back. It takes the energy that you do give to the business and makes it ineffective. So the question that was asked was, how do I get over feeling guilty for taking a day off? In some ways, what I said in the moment was, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to make you, like I can't make somebody feel not guilty for taking a day off. But what I can say is that when you weigh in the balance what's at stake, I think it will be easier for you to embrace the necessity to cultivate days off for yourself, self-care for yourself. And a couple of ways that you can think about this is that while you are instrumental in the business, it is a co-created entity. And you as a person are not necessarily the brand. The brand can live beyond you. A lot of owners will experience this when they take a weekend off and come back and realize their business is still running. And it opens up the possibilities for them. Now they realize that what they've built is not necessarily depending on their, you know, every waking moment being fixed on it. So you have to realize that it's likely you are just over-focused and overestimating the necessity of you being there at every waking moment. The guilt that you feel for not being there can be also um, associated with not wanting people to think that you don't do anything. Well, first of all, I think you should be open with people about what you do uh, do with your time. And you also should know that it's most likely that people want you to do well. They want you to be well. They see you working and they pity you. They pity the amount of work you're putting in. They see that you're not taking days off. And if they saw that you were taking a regular day off every week, it's probable that they're not going to have an issue with it because everybody needs a day off. You need to be able to do that for other people as well. I mean, this wouldn't work if you are trying to make everybody do what you do and hustle and give every little bit of their spare time and you're texting them at 11 p.m. and, and you don't have any boundaries because you expect everybody to be like you, it's almost like you expect people to validate your irresponsible use of time by doing it themselves. And then everybody just ends up burning out, you know? So we have to stop normalizing this kind of hustle culture that doesn't leave margin for life and health. Um, We have to provide that for other people and we have to provide it for ourselves. If you're a leader, especially because of the burdens that you bear. I know Tim Ferriss talks about this somewhere where life is about knowing which little bad thing to let happen. You can't control every single aspect of your business. You have to allow for certain things to get pushed back in order for you to prioritize things that matter more. If you had planned on Saturday to not be in the coffee shop and there is a minor uh, issue in the cafe that could wait till Monday, part of you wants to be the hero, swoop in there and fix it, sent you like, immediately. And while I advocate that things do get fixed, I also think that there is a wrong way of going about it. And when you are sacrificing needlessly to be able to play the hero in that sense and know that you're going to follow through with it still, but it's, no, I'm, I'm actually going to be with my family that day and it's going to be okay. Now, if it's a true emergency, like the cafe is flooding, you know, there are things that happen. I understand But there are a lot of other things that, if we really thought about it, don't require us to actually be there for it, and we can schedule a fix, we can schedule a follow-up and a communication, and it's going to be okay. But we worry that people will think we're lazy if we don't jump on it immediately right now, and it's, you know, the kind of thing that, in the book Essentialism, Greg McEwen talks about this, how he was, you know, 
on a conference call while his wife was giving birth. <laughs> and um, the people found out about this on the conference call. And as he tells it, and you can hear this in the episode that we had with Greg McEwen on essentialism, they were kind of offended and, and said, be with your family, you know? And he thought, well, I have to sacrifice and maybe they'll see this as a noble thing. People don't want you to set that kind of example because then they think you want that from them. So there are limits. You have to allow for some things to go wrong and not efficiently, not ideally, in order for you to be right. If you have a heart to serve your people well, if you are someone who pursues excellence and you know that you can count on yourself to follow through with what you say, good, that, that is it. I mean, you don't need to worry past that, that you're just going to have this slippery slope of compromise where now if you put it off two days, you'll never do it. This is an issue of prioritization, and it's okay to take time for yourself. I have a lot of respect for operators who have seen that kind of over-dedication in hustle culture and the kind of stress and breakdown that that causes and in their own businesses have taken the opportunity to build an expectation into the business that that we are not going to simply push forward at the expense of the people that this business is meant to uh, serve. That includes both the staff and the customers. Places like Orchard Coffee, Cabell Tice over there in, in Waynesville, North Carolina, I know that because their family basically works at the cafe, there are days that normally they'd be open where they just announce that they need some time for their family and they close for a couple of days. And it's amazing that they do that. They could make more money by staying open, but the value of making sure that the first things are taken care of is kept front of mind. And I think a lot of people respect that and it's a lot more sustainable. I'm not saying that you need to go to that length I mean, if you can't close, you can't close, but you can certainly get a hold of your schedule and start deciding which things need to be sacrificed in order for you not to sacrifice yourself. So I hope that this episode was helpful. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me, and I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break, from keys to the shop.